In this session we're going to be looking at Silinth 1's filters. Uh, a filter is one of the most important factors in subtractive synthesis as it filters out the unwanted frequencies of the signal. Uh, there are several different types of filters available and each offers a different type of effect. For example a low pass filter cuts out the high frequencies and a high pass filter cuts out the low frequencies. Most filters have an adjustable parameter called resonance or Q uh, which controls the steepness of the curve of the frequencies it cuts out. I won't go into too much detail on the DSP side of things here but due to the nature of the way filters work, uh, the steeper the curve is set, the more resonance will occur at the cutoff point, which is where certain frequencies will begin to self-oscillate and appear slightly louder. Uh, this can actually be a useful tool and is often used to an advantage in subtractive synthesis. So let's take a look. The first thing to point out here is that there are essentially three controls for the two filters. The first one being for part A, and then if you go to part B, you'll see the same, and then a master filter control here, which although isn't an actual filter itself, it does offer a way to control the filter elements of both part A and B filters at the same time. Starting with filter A, you'll notice just above the cutoff dial there is a little diagram showing you the routing of the filter. By dragging the green box up or down, you can select which of the oscillators are routed through the filter, the choices are oscillators A, oscillators B, both oscillators A and B, or to bypass the filter altogether when you see this dash sign. Let's start by setting this filter to affect both sets of oscillators A, B. Now we can select the type of filter we want here, and the options are to bypass, a low pass filter, a high pass filter, and finally a band pass filter which is a combination of high pass and low pass, allowing a selected bandwidth of frequencies through. Let's start with the low pass filter here, which means it'll only allow low frequencies through here. Now if I adjust the cutoff frequency while playing a few notes, you can hear the effect instantly. Notice at the top right hand side of the LCD display, the actual values of the cutoff dial are shown. This is true for most adjustable parameters on Silent One and can be quite handy when needing specific values. Now that we have a low pass filter set, we can change the steepness of the slope of the filter between 12 dB per octave and 24 dB per octave. Just to show you the difference, I'll play a couple of notes here while it's on 12 dB per octave and now with 24 dB per octave and you can hear that there are far less harmonics in the steeper filter of 24 dB per octave. Now by turning the resonance dial you're setting the Q factor of the filter, which is essentially adding feedback at the cutoff point value forcing the filter to self oscillate. But it's probably easier just to show you, so listen to what happens as I start to increase the resonance value on this low pass filter. Now if I leave the resonance at a fairly high value here, then I can start to play with the cutoff value too. Notice that it's often these sorts of rising tones that come into play during the big breakdowns of electronic dance music. One of the fairly unique features of Silent One, which is rarely found on other software synthesizers, is the drive feature in the filter. This feature adds gentle saturation to the input signal of the filter, adding higher harmonics before it gets filtered, giving similar overtones to the old analogue valves and tubes. The last of the filter features is a special one that appears on very few synths, which is the key track dial. With this feature dialed up, the cutoff frequency of the filter follows the notes being played on the keyboard, meaning that you can set a sharp resonance and then the resonance will always be near to the note that you're playing on the keyboard like this. So that's the basics on filtering which should give you a good idea of how they can be used. 
Uh, have a play with them and see how much you can change the sound of an existing preset. Uh, if you have any questions, then you can head to the Producer Tech Forum. Uh, next time I'm going to be looking at some of the global effects, so I'll see you then.